Hi, I'm George Jelinek. I'm um, Professor and Head of the Neuroepidemiology Unit at the University of Melbourne. And I've also founded a group called Overcoming Multiple Sclerosis. And this week we're going to give you a little bit of a look inside what we're doing um, as a group, but more particularly what the research unit here at the University of Melbourne is doing. So I'm going to give you a brief overview of how we set the unit up and the sorts of projects that we're undertaking uh, as an overview. But during the week you'll also see videos from other people in our unit looking at the uh, retreats that we run, the educational interventions that we offer to people with MS, the living retreats, and a bit of a chat about our most recent paper that we've published in PLOS1, uh, the world's biggest medical journal. And we'll go into a bit more detail about some of the projects um, that we're doing here at the unit. We established the Neuroepidemiology Unit at the University of Melbourne last year in July. So it's around about a year since we, we uh, established this unit and it's a pretty good time to review our progress. Essentially, we were set up um, with philanthropic funding. So we have a real advantage over many other research units in multiple sclerosis because many of them are dependent on industry for funding. So we're pretty happy that we've got um, a, quite a substantial funding base that has come from philanthropic donors, which means we have reduced um, issues around conflict of interest, essentially. Um, we're free to investigate things with no pressure from funding bodies about results or about publication. Our central hypothesis has always been that uh, MS is essentially a lifestyle disease and our charter in this unit is to investigate those particular risk factors, the lifestyle risk factors that can be modified, that can be shown to affect the progression of the course uh, progression and course of this illness. So our unit has a number of projects that are currently underway. We have um, a, a rather big project looking at uh, a very large cohort of people internationally and looking at the risk factors in terms of their lifestyle that affect the disease progressing in those people. Um, we have other studies as well, particularly uh, of people who attend uh, educational workshops that we run about MS and looking at their progress once they start changing their lifestyles. Essentially, we have a, um, a secondary preventive approach to the management of this condition and we're trying to build an evidence base around the factors that can be used in, a, in such a, an approach in clinical management. So clinicians, we would hope eventually, once we translate some of the evidence that we're accumulating, would be in a position to say to people with MS, look, these are the factors that uh, make a difference potentially to the course of your illness. In fact, there's quite some potential to stabilise this illness if you can attend to these particular lifestyle issues. So things like smoking cigarettes, uh, the sort of diet that, that typically is eaten in many developed countries that's heavily processed and full of refined food and animal fats, uh, lack of exercise, lack of sun exposure, people uh, undergoing or being exposed to a lot of stress and not having any way of coping with that. They're the kind of issues we're really interested in that we believe in combination with the best available uh, drug therapy and medical therapy give people the best chance of actually having a long, healthy and happy life after a diagnosis of MS.